Ladies and gentlemen, all the viewers of ITV Gold across the entire North America, today is a very special day, but I would like to begin this episode on your favorite show, The Monty Khan Show, with a quote from Steven Spielberg, one of my favorite directors in the history of direction, and he goes like, he doesn't dream at day, he doesn't dream at night, because he dreams for a living. And the reason why I say this because I have a very, very talented star from the galaxy of the stars who's making waves in the industry with his latest, latest project, which is a super duper hit called Gadar 2. I would like to welcome one of the biggest dreamers of today's era, Utkarsh Sharma. Utkarsh, welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Montiji, And thank you to all the viewers for uh, having me here. And what a quote to begin with. Absolutely, man. I mean, I know, you know, you must be a big fan of Steven Spielberg too. Absolutely. I've been watching him since since decades. And, you know, he's been giving hits after hits. You know, the reason why I, I, I wanted to start off with this quote, because uh, your dad is Steven Spielberg for me, of, <laughs> of, of this industry. Because, you know, I there's there's no project that I can, uh, you know, some gather and the gather series, actually. Yeah. You know, it's one of the the most epic cult films of, of our times. And, uh, you know, people who haven't seen it will not know what, how, how privileged I feel to be sitting with you today. I, I mean, uh, I don't know what to say to that, but uh, I'll, I'll just say that definitely Gadar is one of the most viewed films from the Indian industry worldwide. worldwide. And uh, even Gadar 2 has done very well all over the world again. So it is an honor to be a part of both of them as a child and as, as, a as child. an adult also. <laughs> so so I, I think it's, it's a real blessing. <laughs> it is, it is absolutely. And you've done justice to it, uh, you know, okay. uh, I had a, a different uh, view. Right. And, and this is going towards a compliment, don't take it wrong. No, no, no. no I please. had a different view of Utkar Sharma uh -huh. before watching other two. Okay. And now, I'm a fan, bro. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> that so, works. So no, it does because because what you have done, you've done justice to to Chiranjeev, the, the the character, and throughout the whole film, I could not take my eyes off you. You know, and I, and I want to share this with our audiences, guys. That I went to the movie theater, and I did not even leave for a pee break. I was like, I was so engrossed. That's what that's what filmmaking is. You know when. Your audience doesn't even take a break to go use the washroom because right. they want to know what's going to happen what's next. Gonna what's going to happen next. So exactly. that, that is cult cinema. You were talking about dreams at the start, right? So I right. think that's what we as makers, as actors dream about. You know, to give uh, people that experience that even when they're taking a bite of the popcorn, they stop for a second. They stop for just a second. Just to see the, the screen. <laughs> and that experience is what cinema is all about. Cinema. So I'm so glad that you were to experience something. I had to, I forced myself, I saw it twice. Bro. Oh, great. One, just by myself, and the yeah. second, I dragged my mom and dad. Ah, I oh, didn't they don't go to movie theaters, and they're like, my mom said, Beta, uh, are you going to meet uh, uh, Charanjeet? I said, Mom, make a, make a prayer, and it'll happen. <laughs> and look, here I am, brother, sitting, ah, sitting right <laughs> next to you. But let's go back in time. Do you like time traveling? Yeah, I do. I love okay. uh, Back to the Future kind of films. No, so. time traveling in, 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 in first. Particularly with you, because yeah. a lot of people don't know that you've been to the US, yeah. you studied your bachelor's in fine yes. arts over there, yes, yes, and yes. you've been to Lee Strasberg, right. one, one of the best, the finest method acting schools in, in the United States. Right. So take us back in time, tell us about that that journey. Uh, well, I actually visited the US for the first time um, after my 10th board exams. So people were oh, a Jamna, 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 Jamna right. boy. Right, 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 right. St. Peter's, man. I see, I see. Not Jamna. Right. Jamna. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so after that, you know how uh, big of a deal is. Huge, yeah, right? Huge. Yeah. I see, I see. So, uh, we had Julius Caesar. I don't know if you had Julius Yeah, yeah. Same. The same, same thing? Same. Okay. Same okay. thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sure Shakespeare also didn't read it that much. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so I had a chance to visit New York, actually. Okay. And, uh, I just fell in love with the way they loved movies over there. They do, man. And uh, the kind of set culture they have there, I wanted to learn that. I wanted to, you know, they are the oldest film industry, right? Correct. So I wanted to learn from them and what I can bring here. Okay. And uh, so 
uh, when it was a choice to which college to go to, I chose to go to Chapman University. Chapman University, correct. Uh, right, right. So over there, I did my film uh, BFA in film production. Okay. And um, I got to learn a lot there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was a very good experience working with a different um, mindset of people, working with a different culture, and uh, the only universal language was, I think, films and the love for films. Wow. And then uh, I did a year at Lee Strasberg. I was also doing theatre. Second City is a pretty popular improv uh, studio over there. So I did that as well. So yeah, that was my uh, bit of journey over there. And then I came back here and mm-hmm. started mm-hmm. movies. <laughs> but when you were studying at you know, Chapman and then you were studying, when you were, when you were learning at Lee Strasberg, yeah. did you ever flaunt that, hey, my father is a filmmaker, he made this movie. Did you ever have that at the back of your... Uh, be honest. I, yeah, I'll be honest with you. Actually, even over here, I used to not tell people that ah, I'm from a film family, film family. or uh, or I myself acted as a child in Gadar or whatever. Some of my best friends, obviously, when they visit home or whatever, they came to know. Um, by the end of my 10th grade, everybody got to know that. Correct. Um, but I never wanted to make friends on the basis of that. I didn't want nice, to. Nice. I wanted to. All, I was very adamant to have my own identity. So well said. So, uh, I think over there also I never told, apart from one or two of my friends who were really close to me, no one ever knew that I was from a film background. So, what happens then is that you get the treatment that everybody is getting on set. Correct. So, I did, did, was yeah, yeah, I, I did all kinds of jobs on set over there. Sure. Uh, not just for the university, but even outside when I was working on uh, other people's projects. So I did everything from sound. To, I was a grip boy also over there. Wow. I uh, I did uh, AC, I, I worked as an assistant cameraman. Um, I, I tried to experience as much as I could, Correct. you know. Correct. And uh, when you work all the different jobs that are there on set, you learn that it is not just the actor, just the director, just the producer who makes the film. It is every individual right. contributes right. so much creativity. If one person is not on it. Then that, then that whole shot could lose that beauty, wow. you know. So I think it was a very uh, nurturing experience for me. And that, that's uh, a beautiful uh, word that you use, nurturing yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. That maybe that is something that you needed, and that at to such a young stage in your life. Yeah. How many years did you give there in the US? I was there for f- four, four and a half years. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time, of course. Yeah. yeah I guess. <laughs> and what did you come back with? If I had to ask you, like, if you delete that yeah. four years, what would you miss in the Yudhkar Sharma? I would have uh, definitely missed a little. I mean, it it made me very clear in what kind of films I want to do. What kind of uh, my principles got really clear over there. You know, uh, you matured. Sure yeah, 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 yeah. Use a better word there. Yeah. You understood cinema. Yeah, you do some things right, you do some things wrong. It's like your playground, you know. I, I looked at it as my playground where it's okay if I make a mistake. It's okay if I don't do it right, if I don't get it right. Correct. But I learn from it. Learn so, it. your principles and your basics, you right. know, they get clear. Right. And then you build upon it once you start working. And especially when you're from an ICSE school, you oh, know, it's yeah. like, a, like that's a... Second, I know, spot. I know, it's a second I know. destination. Let's go to LA or let's go to New York. <laughs> I know, you, you're you from ICSE as well, yeah. the same board, so you know, uh, ICSE is way harder, way harder than college. It is, it is, uh, it is. You know, Alfred Hitchcock, one of the best, best yeah. directors that we've ever seen, said, he, he, his famous quotes were, mm-hmm. there are three things that make a film successful. Mm-hmm. Three things, script, script and script. script. So this is one of his most favorite lines. Mm-hmm. So what were you waiting for when you came back? Because mm-hmm. I know a genius happened, yeah. but when you came back to Mumbai, what did you tell your dad? Like, okay, dad, I studied acting. What do you want to do? Uh, the focus was, as you said, it was script, script, script. And uh, sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you don't get it right. Um, it's, 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 it's the emotion that really makes a script. Correct. A script, you know, you can. There are so many stories nowadays. There's something releasing every week. Every week. Yeah. Uh, whether it's on OTT or uh, TV or theaters. But everything doesn't click. 
No, that's right? true. That's true. Uh, all the writers, all the directors, they have plenty of experience, but everything doesn't click. Doesn't click because that script, that emotion, has to come from within you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, the writer, the actor, and the director—they are the best judges of knowing that has it come from within us, us or yeah. are we just trying to pretend? Are we just you just making a movie for the yeah, sake of making yeah, a movie? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so I think script was always the main focus and uh, during lockdown when we were working um, me dad we used to discuss gadar 2 so much was it your brain child did you tell your dad that we got to make a gadar 2 yeah no no no, no, no. It, was, it, was, no, no it, it was it was uh, always his okay and the writer shaktiman ji Shakti it was their right. thing right. because um, i was pretty I, i was not on on board actually You know, I never thought that a gadar two could be made. Right? Or maybe your dad was waiting for you to grow up. Uh, no, 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 no. no. That, I'm gonna that's... make when Utkash becomes at a certain age. I'm gonna launch gadar. No, 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 no. Because if that was the case, it would have happened way sooner when things were more um, yeah, that's easier what I to. Correct, correct. You know? Before COVID. Yeah, yeah. Before COVID, or even ten years before that. Because twenty uh, years ka gap happened, right? So. Uh, it could have happened even then with some other actor if the story was there so timing but uh, yeah it's all timely and uh, i think some things are meant to happen Des- do you believe in destiny i think this is making me believe this is <laughs> you know, i used to be the kid who used to not tell people that i'm in gadar i'm in gadar and now uh, there's no escape from the no franchise <laughs> <laughs> that's a look alike he looks like me i have a twin yeah. brother yeah yeah <laughs> but but tell me like when when your dad and you were sitting down uh, Did you tell your dad that you know you want to be Charanjit, or did your dad tell you, "Bera, you going to be Charanjit"? Who who did that? Uh, see, dad is very professional and very loyal to his work. Correct. For him, no family comes first. For that, the script, the story, the audience is his primary uh, goal. The audience is his first family. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, so when he did tell me about the story, he did tell me about the role. Uh, in one line, he said that this is the story of Arjun and Abhimanyu, and if you want to play Abhimanyu, then this is the story. And Abhimanyu is a character; is one of the greatest characters in the Mahabharata. Mahabharata. And uh, it has uh, the character has is very heroic and uh, has a lot of sacrificing quality in him. Okay. And uh, he's he's primarily from the emotion that he can do anything for his father, and he can do anything for uh, okay. to make things right. that is his emotion so that that is something i resonate with every child resonates with that you know every child wants to do something for their father and uh, it's a very universal emotion which is why gadar 2 has clicked so much yeah. uh because of this emotion that what a f- son can do for his father and what a father, what a father can, do can do for his son the reciprocation was yeah, yeah. was amazing you yeah. know i have i have so many uh Reasonings and I have so many theories. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, every like you know, you watch a cricket match and everybody has a commentary. Yeah, they are. You could have hit the shot like that. Yeah. You could have got a deep third man. So everybody has a different theory mm-hmm. as to why Gadar Two is successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like to share some some of those theories sure. with you. So the the one theory which really piqued my interest was the fact that Gadar Two has an audience mm-hmm. which saw Gadar One. So. It, since Gadar One was itself a successful brand, right. they wanted to know what comes back in Gadar Two as 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 a sequel. Absolutely. What Tara Sakina is going to do as a sequel? Yeah. So they bring they were they were probably youngsters. Now they're married, they've married, they've kids, so they bring their their family along. Yeah. The second theory that I've uh, come across was the the beauty of universal harmony that yeah. Gadar portrays towards uh, you know the world and yeah. shows us that 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 religion. That humanity is one of the biggest religions, right? You see Tara Singh and Sakina. Yeah, yeah. The scene where your mom puts the tawis in your, yeah, yeah. In, in the you know when yeah when the song ends, when Nikla Gadi leke, mm-hmm. and you know the 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 this beautiful smile yeah that Sunny Paji gives yeah that he welcomes embraces that so it's not a war of religions it's 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 a war of good against bad exactly and the victory of good over evil or over evil. Absolutely, it's What? that's always been gather, and uh, I think this factor, the second factor especially, of course, the curiosity for any film that has been a big hit, the second will be a curiosity factor, 
but then the curiosity has to translate into uh, you know uh, attention correct like okay i got curious i looked i started watching your film now is it having hold of me is it am i going through with it am mm-hmm. i enjoying it am yeah. i getting entertained with it um so that only happens when you have a good script when you have and good script. Uh, you have something meaningful to say then it becomes really uh, a historic success the other one also had the same angle where tara singh ends up teaching ashraf ali what uh, basically ahimsa parmodhar is what he ends up teaching that there is nothing above peace there is nothing above humanity humanity yeah. and in this also the message is the same it's the same it's not against any country any religion or any group it's it's a film about love 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 for your family love for your loved ones and love transcends any kind of enmity that's the beauty of gadar 1 and gadar 2 so it's kind of the same message recreated in the sequel but in a different angle in a different angle yeah you know <clears throat> since we're talking about hollywood directors there is yeah. a uh, a director which i really love his name is clint eastwood oh, a yes. great actor yes. so clint eastwood says that if your the villain of your film is loved uh-huh. your movie has crossed boundaries yeah. your villain uh-huh. manish wadwa yeah is getting accolades and in recently he said that the biggest compliment he got when his wife said i'm so happy when you die yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Manish Wadwa is killing it here. I mean, you know, he's you know that that uh, the uh, General Hamid. Yeah. That I think that character is gonna gonna live for a very very long time. Yeah. It's it's been a while. See, our Indian film industry was always known for its villains. Yeah, but nobody liked villains. No one liked them. They have loved him. Yeah, they've loved him. I'm sure. Uh, and uh, he's performed it so well. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when when it see I, i had the luxury of seeing it when it was being written on paper yeah, written on paper right and uh, it was truly a menacing character and we were really worried who we are going to cast for uh, the sure. character sure. because um, you see as i was saying bollywood uh, bo- not bollywood indian film industry was known for its villains villains we had a lot of actors at one point especially in the 80s 90s early 2000s who could seamlessly do these negative shades over the last 10 years there's been a dearth of such actors i see i see uh, because we've seen a lot of mainstream actors moving into the negative space correct correct and uh, so you know when you do cast someone who's played a hero before and you're casting him as a villain the audience is always on the f- fence like you know should i look at him as a good guy but then even the actor cannot do a lot of things because his image his or her image comes in between true true, true. you know so we needed someone who's fresh who's up for the task and manish ji's done a lot of work before he's done he's uh, but, and all that uh, stuff for uh, for the celluloid he's still fresh fresh and uh, you know there's a joke going around whenever he dons the pakistan military general's hat <laughs> he crosses 500 <laughs> he crosses 500 <laughs> yeah whether it's pathan or whether it's qatar i i told him i had a conversation with manish i said manish If you go at this point in time in Pakistan and stand for elections, you'll win. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> might, he might. And he was like, "What are you talking?" I was like, "Dude, people are loving you." In the U.S., people give him standing ovations in the movie theater. Oh, really, bro? In Times Square, there are, you know, in the U.S., we have a, we have a magnitude of different ethnicities. Mm-hmm. So here in India, you're mm-hmm. only seeing Indians watch films. Yeah. Where, whereas, if you fly. across the oceans you'll see pakistanis bangladeshis nepalis afghanis uh, south americans caucasians every ethnicity goes in a movie theater and sits and watch a movie so that exposure of your film being seen by different yeah. ethnicities with subtitles obviously yeah, yeah that is what you know you called uh, world cinema you know oh, yeah, <laughs> you that's... know being It's a shame I couldn't go there this time and see what was happening in the theaters over there. You could probably go to Lee Strasberg now and say, "Hey, bye, guys, this, <laughs> is my, this is my film." <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> But uh, I think 
I actually I did watch a uh, couple of films when I was over there a couple of hindi films uh, because not every film used to release not there. every film but now it's changed now yeah. every film has a uh, a US distribution a theatrical release uh-huh. and yeah. you know it's uh, back then it was like the big big films that only shahrukh khan films yeah basically because kya hota hai you know uh, the kids who are born and raised over there oh you know bollywood yeah i know bollywood there's only shahrukh khan in bollywood so <laughs> yeah. bollywood starts and ends at shahrukh khan yeah i think it was dilwale or something dilwale or maybe uh, kalhona ho kuch uh, uh-huh. maybe uh, kahona pyare was on the sorry not kahona pyare but one of those k series of yeah, yeah, yeah. karan johar because people you know the uh, the west loves karan johar's portrayal of uh, a cinematic india yeah. which is a dream mm-hmm. you know it, it's yeah, yeah, it's they, 1% they, of what they, the reality is yeah but uh, yeah definitely definitely shahrukh khan sir's films have a great overseas market so there's no de- denying that i have a question how was it when you met sunny devil for the first time your first scene with sunny bajji as a, know, as a kid or as an adult as an adult <laughs> you do you have memories of gather one yeah, by yeah, one yeah definitely what what was your last memory of gather uh, i remember the, everything in detail you know because it was you could say it was like a little bit of a See, I was four, five when we started yeah, filming. Yeah. You must be running around in the in your living room like a like a superhero. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> and next thing I know is that I have to wear uh, all these old tattered clothes and <laughs> go across the border. Wow! But uh, I remember everything clearly because it was such a a mini traumatic experience. Because uh, as a kid, I had to work uh, during nights. during uh, like 72 hours without any sleep we used oh, to work uh, we used to work in the heat running on top of trains the helicopters there there like 100 things i remember pretty much the entire making i had not seen it but i have it over here are you kidding me yeah the last memory i have was when i was 9 or 10 bro i don't have many memories before that i don't okay. think i remember too much before that but that experience was so uh, unique you could say happening for the first time yeah, and there was no green screen or any of these uh, things that are there now yeah, so everything was real 100% wow. all the stunts were real there's no uh, dupe for the kid <laughs> the, the kid has to do it like chalti uh, on the chalti truck pe you have to jump did you jump yeah, yeah they, everything <laughs> and there was only two results you know whether we get the shot or whether we just go go to heaven oh my god you know It was just it was life or death the way we shot the first one wow uh, the second one um obviously with sunny sir i'll share the experience the first time i met him for this film was actually during rehearsals uh, when we were rehearsing na nikla gaddi leke yeah that yeah, was so, the first time yeah i met him at the rehearsal hall and he had come to see what uh, choreography we were planning and uh, he saw it he, he really liked it uh, he gave a little bit of feedback etc and then yeah it was there he it wasn't a uh, a big dramatic thing not a dramatic thing but, uh, it was a very professional meet you could say but were you always in awe never were you ever in awe of sunny like the magnanimous personality that he is see i've always uh, looked up to him as a person and as an actor okay. because uh, the entire family actually is very uh, down to earth just like you man i mean you're the uh, most humble guy i've ever met <laughs> so no, you're, you're too kind <laughs> no, I'm, but uh, uh, i'm sure you've met met sunny sir and you've met dharam ji very, very very humble very so kind, yes. Uh, yes. they are they are really they don't behave like superstars yes yes